D backs have another game where their offense doesn't show up as they drop game one to the San Francisco Giants. So let's talk about it. You are locked on Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. I'm Miller Thomas, host of this wonderful podcast. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer. So please go check out my website, millerthomas 24myportfoliocom On there, you can see all my latest work from my packages to my articles, to my photos, and my graphic design. On today's podcast, we'll be talking about the D-backs game one loss to the San Francisco Giants. We'll preview Jordan Montgomery's debut versus Blake Snell in segment number two. Then we'll wrap up the podcast with the D-backs needing to upgrade their bullpen. But before we get into any of that, I first want to say thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free. It's available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. And one of those platforms is YouTube. So please hit subscribe to Locked on Diamondbacks on YouTube. We are trying to hit 2,000 subs by the All-Star break. So please hit subscribe. But now let's get into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. And let's talk about that game one loss to the San Francisco Giants. Because the D-backs had another game where their offense flat out didn't show up in the finale against the Chicago Cubs. This D-backs offense was one for 11 with runners in scoring position. And in game one to the San Francisco Giants, this D-backs offense was 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Not only did they not convert, they also didn't even give themselves a chance. They weren't able to create many run scoring opportunities. And on the night, it was just an Awful, awful performance by the D-backs offense. Give credit to where credit is due. Logan Webb is someone that we've compared a lot to Zach Gallon on this podcast the last couple of years because when you look at the numbers between those two guys, very similar, very parallels, those two guys, Logan Webb and Zach Gallon. And for Zach, excuse me, for Logan Webb in this game, he looked absolutely phenomenal against his D-backs team. And That's where we need to start because this D-backs offense had two hits against Logan Webb in the first inning, and they were not able to convert those chances into run scoring opportunities. They did have a run scoring opportunity, but the D-backs were not able to do anything to bring those guys home because Ketel Marte started the game off with a single. Carroll followed it up with a single. So you had first and second Nobody out, and the D-backs were able to do nothing with runners in scoring position. One of the biggest players in this D-backs lineup who has not been able to do anything recently is Christian Walker, who I think has eight or nine straight games without driving in an RBI now. Like Christian Walker, as the cleanup hitter for this D-backs team, just needs to do more from that cleanup spot. He just doesn't drive in enough runs. This season, I think if you look at numbers of runners in scoring position, he's been fine, but throughout his career, that has always been the biggest issue with Christian Walker. He's the guy that could hit near 40 home runs, a guy that can drive in over 100 RBIs, but he never does it in the clutch. So many times last year, he hit a home run with nobody on base, and that's not what we want to see this season. Entering this game, he had a 333 average and 1154 OPS with runners in scoring position. So according to the numbers, Christian Walker has been good in that area, but when you look at the eye test, when you watch the games, Feels like Christian Walker doesn't get enough clutch hits, especially recently. So he's someone that I'm watching to hopefully pick it up and come through or come through more with the runners in scoring position because 
with the kind of profile he has with the hard contact stats, like Christian Walker is someone that needs to be one of the major power bats for this D-backs team in the middle of the lineup. And as the cleanup hitter, he just has not done enough throughout the last couple of years to, I, I don't know, I don't know if the word justify is reasonable in this situation because Christian Walker, when you look at the numbers, really good, but when you look at the numbers of runners in scoring position and what a cleanup hitter is supposed, uh, is supposed to do, I don't know if Christian Walker is actually capitalizing on his opportunity. So he's someone that we could squeeze a little bit more juice from because the Z-backs team, like I said, two hits in the first inning. And after that, they did absolutely nothing. I think at one point, it was like 20 straight batters or something crazy that Logan Webb retired, 19 or 20. Like on the night, Logan Webb went seven innings, Two hits, no earned runs, one walk, five Ks. This D-backs offense did absolutely nothing against Logan Webb. And we'll preview game number two in segment number two as the D-backs take on Blake Snell. We'll talk about what they need to do in that game in segment number two because what they need to do is not what they did in game one or what they did in the finale against the Chicago Cubs. So hopefully this D-backs offense can pick it up a little bit It doesn't help when your starting pitcher leaves the game early because Ryan Nelson, someone that has been pitching very well recently, had to leave this game after a comebacker to the mound. Ryan Nelson only is able to make it through two innings, two hits allowed, no earned runs. It would look like there's going to be another start where Ryan Nelson at least looks solid and is able to give you five to six innings of three earned runs or less. Fortunately, that didn't happen. The D-backs throw in their new reliever that they just called up in the last couple of days in Logan Allen. And I have to admit, he looked really good in this long relief appearance. 4.2 innings pitch, one earned run, three Ks. What was really most impressive about that outing is the fact that Logan Allen didn't give up a lot of hard contact. He didn't give up a lot of earned runs. Logan Allen, when you look at his career on baseball reference, Not very pretty, a lot of seasons with a high ERA, but in this game, I thought he looked really good. The issue is the bullpen after Logan Allen left, Bryce Jarvis was not his best loading up the bases, and then Kyle Nelson came in right after him and cleared the bases with a couple base hits. This D-backs bullpen, this D-backs bullpen was not good in this game. It was not good in the finale against the Chicago Cubs, and it's really frustrating because you got 6.2 6.2 innings pitch of one earned run between Ryan Nelson and Logan Allen. You got a fantastic start between those two guys. And this D-backs offense in the bullpen was not able to do enough to put this D-backs team in position to win the game. That's really frustrating to see. Hopefully, the D-backs can get back and correct it in in game number two against Blake Snell, who has been struggling to start the year. This D-backs offense just needs to do more. One thing that I would like to see this D-backs offense do is not play Jace Peterson 0 for 3, has a 45 batting average now on the season. Jace Peterson is not good. Tori Lavello, I get it. You care about the platoon situation. You talked about how you want to get Jace Peterson going. He is not a major league at bat. Take Jace Peterson out the lineup. Play Blaze Alexander every single day. And then if you want a defensive substitution, go with Kevin Newman. There should be no reason Jace Peterson ever starts a game. He should only be coming in every, what, eighth day to be either a pinch runner or a pinch hitter. Jace Peterson... I love the fact that he got in that bat in the World Series thanks to Tommy Pham, but the guy is just not a major leaguer, and he's hurting this D-back team whenever he's out there. Offensively, he did nothing in this game, and defensively, he also had an error to hurt this D-back team. I don't know why Tori Lovello keeps playing Jace Peterson, but the D-backs want to get back to their winning ways. I assume Jace Peterson needs to stop being in this D-backs lineup. Now we'll talk about what the D-backs need to do as we see Jordan Montgomery debut versus Blake Snell. But before we get into that conversation, I first want to talk to you guys about Policy Genius. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. 
Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Let's talk about Jordan Montgomery's debut because Monty is finally making his debut with the D-backs, signed in the offseason for around $25 million. And thank God the D-backs pulled off that move because Erod was the big addition to this D-backs rotation. And recently, he just got transferred to the 60-day injured list. So with Monty finally making his debut, it was critical that the D-backs signed him on the 12th hour of the offseason because if he wasn't about to make his debut, I don't know where this D-backs rotation would be considering Ryan Nelson might have just hurt himself. Tommy Henry has been struggling. And then Brandon Fott, he's coming off a good start. But he has been shaky this season. So good to see Jordan Montgomery finally making his debut for this D-backs team. Montgomery is someone that was absolutely nasty last year for the uh, Texas Rangers and was really good in the postseason, right? We saw him in the World Series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. He was fine in the World Series, made one start, six innings, four earned runs, but Overall, in the postseason, Jordan Montgomery has been a very good pitcher. 37.2 innings pitch, 11 earned runs for a 2.63 year array with 24 strikeouts, I believe. Jordan Montgomery is someone that the D-backs are going to need as the season progresses, especially as we enter the postseason because with Zach Allen and Merrill Kelly both being right-handed pitchers, Jordan Montgomery and Erod add a different flavor being two lefties with Montgomery. He's also a guy that when you look at his pitching arsenal, not the typical guy. He's not someone that's trying to go out there and pump 95, 96. Jordan Montgomery is a guy that throws a hard sinker. And because of that, he's not afraid to pitch to contact. Whenever you have a sinker ball pitcher, those guys might be decent at racking up the K's or whatever, but More than likely, they're going to try to pitch the contact and rack up the ground balls. For Jordan Montgomery, he's been a guy throughout his career, doesn't get a ton of strikeouts, but does a great job of really limiting the walks and not giving up home runs. He doesn't give up the hits that absolutely crush you, and that's why Jordan Montgomery has been so good throughout his career. He's coming off a season where he had a 3.2 year rate last year, 3.48 the year before. 3-8-3 the year before that. So three straight seasons, the ERA has trended in the positive direction for Jordan Montgomery. His singer ball was his go-to pitch last year. It's thrown around 93 miles per hour. It's pretty effective as well. All of Jordan Montgomery's pitches are pretty effective. The one pitch that's not super effective is his four-seam fastball, but he threw it the fourth a fewest amount of times last season. So it's not even like the fastball is the go-to pitch for Jordan Montgomery. So I'm not too concerned there. When you look at Jordan Montgomery and what he did in Reno this season, that might leave you concerned when you look at the stats. 7.2 total innings pitch with nine earned runs, nine strikeouts, and five walks combined. But Reno is its own animal. A lot of guys give up earned runs there. A lot of guys give up hard contact there. So For Jordan Montgomery, I'm not going to look too hard into his Reno Aces stats. I will look hard into how he looks in his debut against the Giants. Again, it is his debut, so I'm not going to say it's the end of the world if he has a bad start, but I want to know how strong is his arm? How hard is he throwing the ball? 
How well is he locating? What does his command look like? So I will have a checklist for Jordan Montgomery in his debut, but if he goes out there and pitches five innings and give up four earned runs, like I'm not going to crush Monty in his first start of the season as he's still trying to ramp up for the D-backs. That's why if the D-backs go out there and crush Blake Snell, I'm not going to be entirely surprised. Blake Snell was called up or was signed kind of late into the offseason by the San Francisco Giants, not off to the hottest start of the season for the Giants, and could be a good opportunity for the D-backs to kind of tee off against Blake Snell in this game because he's been struggling to start the year, still trying to adjust to San Fran, and maybe this could be a game where the D-backs offense gets back on track. Blake Snell so far this season, 11.6 hits per nine, Home runs per nine, 2.6, like a lot of hits, a lot of home runs given up for Blake Snell, a lot of walks as he normally does. But when you look at the D-backs numbers versus Blake Snell in his career, not very good at all. There's not really anyone on this current D-back staff that has performed well against Blake Snell in his career. This D-backs team, 131 average against Blake Snell. They are 14 for 107 against Blake Snell in their respective careers. Blake Snell has dominated everyone in this D-backs lineup. So for the reigning Cy Young Award winner, yes, he's performed well against his D-backs team, but he hasn't performed too well this season as he's still trying to ramp up and get adjusted to San Fran. Maybe this could be a start where the D-backs really take advantage. They've seen Blake Snell a ton being with the Padres the last couple of seasons, the D-backs are very familiar, very familiar with Blake Snell. He's been with the Padres since 2021, so they do have a pretty large sample size against Blake Snell in Blake Snell's career. So for the D-backs, they are not going to be fooled with how Blake Snell looks. They are very familiar with him. They know the scouting report on Blake Snell. The only question is, will they actually come through with runners in scoring position, will they come through offensively against Blake Snell? Would love to hurt the Giants' confidence a little bit with a big Blake Snell stinker. So the D-backs offense, the, it just needs to show up in game number two. It has not been as good recently. Guys like Christian Walker have fallen off a little bit recently. Guys like Eugenio Suarez have also been a little bit of a slump as well. You know, those first... Two, three weeks of the season, this D-backs offense was one of the best in Major League Baseball. We're seeing them start to regress to the mean a little bit over the last couple weeks. So hopefully this D-backs offense can pick it up once again and come through against Blake Snell, the former foe of the San Diego Padres. Now we'll talk about what the D-backs need to do in regards to the bullpen because it has not been that good this season. But before we get there, I first want to talk to you guys about this little game called Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game pull off some bank heist, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game, Monopoly Go, lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime, with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There is so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go. Now free on the App Store or the Google Play Store. And I also want to talk to you guys about the greatest fantasy sports app in the country right now called Prize Picks. Because spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway, don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entries today. 
Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. My favorite thing to do on prize picks is a little take LeBron over on points, take LeBron over on rebounds. And if that pays out, I feel good seeing money go into my pocket. And if you want to see money go into your pocket, download the app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now let's talk about the D-backs slowly upgrading their bullpen and hopefully they continue to do it because Jordan Montgomery, of course, is going to get called up tomorrow or at the time of you guys listening to this podcast, whether it's Thursday or Friday, he's going to get called up. We just saw Justin Martinez get called up and Logan Allen get called up with Tommy Henry and Luis Frias getting sent down. And it is never too early or too late to make good, smart bullpen decisions because a guy like Luis Frias, he was someone that was on my radar entering the season as a potential breakout candidate, a potential back-end bullpen arm because whenever you watch Luis Frias, he looks absolutely nasty. He has the hard cutter, the curveball. Like, he can throw it upper 90s. He's got wicked movement on that curveball, but he just someone that can't help but give up Hard contact. He's someone that can't help but give up a lot of walks on the season. 995 ERA for Luis Frias, seven earned runs and 6.1 innings pitch. And the really bad numbers 2.368 whip, 15.6 hits per nine, and 5.7 walks per nine. Luis Frias just gave up way too much damage to be an effective reliever. And he's not the only one. Tommy Henry from the rotation is being sent down. With Erod going on the 60-day injured list and Jordan Montgomery about to get the call up, it's not a surprise. Tommy Henry, maybe if he pitched well in that recent start at the, against the Chicago Cubs, maybe he could have stayed on the roster as a long reliever because he was pitching well until like that fifth inning where he gave up double after double. But because he gave up double after double, his ERA continued to skyrocket. Now Tommy Henry, when you look at the numbers, 18.1 innings pitch. 14 earned runs, a 6.87 ERA. And for Tommy Henry, you just don't know where he's going to fall on the depth chart for even the Reno Aces because Christian Mena is down there. He's pitching very well. Slade Kokoni is down there. He's pitching very well. I just don't know where some of these guys are getting sent down, where they're going to pitch for even the Reno Aces. And then getting called up. Justin Martinez, he's been crushing it this year for the Reno Aces. He already made his debut for the D-backs and looked good. Of course, Justin Martinez is someone that could really throw the hell out of the baseball, rack up triple digits on the, is it called a speedometer? I don't know. But on whatever you use to track pitches, Justin Martinez is someone that can hit 102, 103, even 104 miles per hour. He can absolutely rack it up. And he wasn't the only guy called up. Logan Allen, like we talked about in segment number one, this is someone that has not been a good pitcher throughout his time in the major leagues. And that's why it's so impressive that he was actually able to look good in this outing for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Is this the greatest development project by Brent Strom of all time because Logan Allen when go year by year even if you don't do that if you just look at his career ERA 5 8 9 a very big number but he looked very good in this one I don't know if Logan Allen can keep it up um because he's been a guy who has not been that effective throughout his major league career so we'll see if he can keep it up this season but so far so good for him But if he can't keep it up, like there's still more moves for this D-backs team to make if they want to upgrade that bullpen. I know Andrew Salfrank hasn't been perfect this season in the minor leagues, but has he been better than a Miguel Castro or a a, uh, Scott McGuff? Maybe. I know at least Andrew Salfrank was good last year on this D-backs team as we entered the postseason and through the postseason. McGuff and Castro was not good in those situations. A Christian Maynard or a Slay Kakoni. Christian Mena feels like a guy you want to call up when you're ready for him to start. But a guy like Slade Kokoni, we saw him 
just last season be a long reliever for the D-backs. And the fact that he's pitching well right now, I wouldn't be afraid to see him get called up either. This D-backs bullpen needs a major upgrade, whether it's internal, through the Reno Aces, or making a deal. Because right now, this D-backs bullpen just hasn't been good enough. Of course, once Paul Seawall gets back, it will definitely help out this bullpen a lot more. Everyone will have a more stable position and get dropped down one spot in the bullpen. With that, even with that being said, if I go through the bullpen, Seawald, Ginkle, what, Kyle Nelson, Ryan Thompson, Bryce Jarvis, Justin Martinez, and then who would you go with the other two guys? Like Miguel Castro, I guess either Mantiply or Scott McGuff, like is not looking good. I would much rather either replace Mantiply, McGuff, or Miguel Castro with the Slades of the world, or even probably too early for Christian Mena, but he's definitely pitching pitching better than those guys. I would much rather see a Slade and an Andrew Salfrank get called up and replace two of those three guys in the McGuffs, the Castros, and the Mantiplies of the world because those guys just haven't been good enough this season for the Arizona Diamondbacks and for this squad that's all about winning and is struggling a little bit right now. Like the D-backs are now 9-11 and 11 on the season, two games below 500. And part of it is because this D-backs bullpen has not been able to close games after the seventh inning and not close games in the sense of their ninth inning. The actual, the actual closer has been bad, but it's like those middle innings, innings six through eight. This D back to bullpen has not been able to be effective enough and have those shutdown innings against opposing teams. So hopefully as Paul Seawall gets healthier, this D backs bullpen gets better. And I also hope this D backs front office eventually makes a move and says, you know what? Let's just call up Sal Frank. Let's get rid of the Castros and the McGuffs of the world because this bullpen needs an upgrade. And some of the pieces that we have right now just aren't good enough. Now that's it for this edition of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Deuces.